we've got the the GPP block done and basically a bridge between GPP and um, more of an off-season style of work, which is still general physical preparedness, but to an extent we're back to using the bar, we're back to training hard. After about week 13, this is where things are going to become a little bit, um, a little bit of personal preference. Okay, how you train is going to take into account one thing. What you plan on doing meat-wise, so we'll just say that you have to have a qualifying meat for the next for the next big meat that you want to do. Let's just say you chose to do a different meat. Um, let's say it's, instead of trying to do um, USAPL Raw Nationals, you're opting to do, um, let's say, APF Raw Nationals. So therefore you've got to compete in the APF or AAPF, whichever one you're, you're doing. Um, so you've got to therefore do basically a, a meet to be able to qualify. So now that we've got 13 solid weeks of training and after the meet, which really was on the 12, because that first week of meet week doesn't really count, we're basically looking for, uh, just for semantics, to make it very easy, we're going to say week 26 is our, is our next meet that we're going to qualify. We're basically going to put it right in the middle of a, a calendar. So... Okay, so we've wrapped up week 13. So now we've got weeks 14 to 26 to get us to our qualifier. Okay. Chances are if you qualified for anything else, you're probably going to be all right. Qualifying really isn't hard. Usually for most times, it's just competing. So uh, th this shouldn't really be a huge meet, which is why we're not really trying to ramp up to that that much. So to break this down further, I would say that probably a six-week prep is, pro is probably going to be plenty. So that means from weeks 14 to 20, we're going to we're going to we're going to push it hard on the off season. Okay. Then in weeks 21. To 26, we're gonna we're gonna meet prep. So pretty pretty short meet prep, nothing too hard. The only thing we want to do here with the meet prep, we want to ramp up for that meet over time. Okay, so here's our intensity. Going up. All right, so. We just want to ramp that intensity up, and then we also want to bring back the competition lifts. We want to bring those back. Now, as for here, what what we want to do is basically continue to do what we were doing in weeks um, six to thirteen, but we need to try to start thinking about. Um, what we know from previous training cycles works well and what doesn't, and begin to formulate something that's going to help us here. So even though this is still a qualifying meet, we still want PRs. We still want to give our all. That's that's um, definitely a given when it comes to powerlifting. But with this, we're going to start to begin to push our rep ranges more to the more to the one one to five uh, reps on the heavy work. Okay. As in the other one, we were probably more we were probably more in the three to five. I'll put that up here. We were probably more in the three to five or even oldest people but probably six, honestly. Three to six is probably gonna be more of our heavier work here. Okay. So working up to occasional triples, mainly sticking around fives and sixes. This we're looking up Occasionally working at the singles, um, but mainly staying around probably threes to fives for our heavy work. Um, then I, when that's over, um, which you would you would definitely want to end this, you would definitely want to end make week twenty probably a deload. Okay, deload before you start to prep for the meet, train for the meet, and then week twenty seven, we're just gonna say it's the meet. 
Okay. So, we're basically halfway through our year at this point. Okay. So, to briefly recap this, uh, considering I got a small whiteboard, um, you're basically looking at reps three to six on your heavy work, um, experimenting with your supplemental and accessory work, and what is helping you feel better, feels good, help you see positive momentum. Save that. Save that for when you need it. And then continue to experiment, continue to train hard. If you train hard, you're going to be all fine. You're not, you're not going to get weaker um, by any means. You're just not going to be at your peak performance. It's a big difference between being not strong and not being at your peak performance. Um, so then we're going to basically roll into weeks 14 through 26. First, first basically half of that is just going to be pushing hard in offseason, ramping our reps up a little bit more, um, and continuing to experiment like we were up here. Um, but just taking things into account a little bit more and working a little bit harder. So we're basically trying to increase that intensity a little bit. But remember, we're still probably really using more specialty bars. That's probably something else I should put down. Because my handwriting is terrible. Specialty bars and uh, things of that nature. Trying to stay away from the competition lifts as much as possible. Um, unless if you directly have a reason you're going to put it in there. Um, then weeks 21-26 meat prep, ramping up with the competition lifts, can't stress that enough, ramping up with the competition lifts, so that, that's a good thing, um, that you're getting some competition work for just a qualifier, or I'm even going to put small meat, because some people don't need to qualify, so that's if you choose to do small meat. Then once we get to the meat week, we're almost going to kind of begin to change things up a little bit, but I'm going to show we're going to move things around a little bit more for the, the big meat. 